Bob Scully's World Show is made possible in part by GDI, Commercial Cleaning Services, one provider, one solution. And by Clocks Technologies, Biophotonic Lighting manages skin from within. Hi, this is Bob Scully and welcome to another edition of the World Show, the Entrepreneur Series. This can save lives and actually it does. If there are cardiologists among you, you may even recognize it. And in that case, you'll know that this guide wire, unlike many other implements used in cardiology, is not metallic. It's actually optic fiber. It uses light. And the company you're about to meet, OpSense, OP for optics, uses light in extremely innovative ways, not just for cardiology, but also, for instance, to prevent bombs from falling accidentally onto the decks of aircraft carriers. I kid you not, you'll find out about both of those innovations in a moment when you meet the president, Louis Laflamme. Here he is. Louis Laflamme, diversity is very much a fashionable term these days. It usually describes people or, or populations um, but it can also occasionally describe a company. And when I visited OpSense, you took me on a tour down the main hallway, and it was like a picture gallery tour, and it was your annual reports for the past couple of decades, each one framed in proper order. And at first, it's all oil and gas on the cover, and it's clear that that's the vocation of the company. Then we go a little bit further, and suddenly a medical picture creeps in, and then finally the medical pictures crowd out the oil and gas pictures, and then a military picture creeps in. And so when you see all that, you say, boy, this company must be doing well and certainly is doing a whole bunch of things. So let's start with um, cardiology. What, what links all these activities together, of course, is like the word OP, upsense, is optics and fiber optic. But, uh, but let's talk about the cardiology aspect. That's what most people, I think, will be curious about. What does upsense do? Well, uh, like you described, is that with light, with, with fiber optic, we can, uh, we can measure multiple parameters such as uh, pressure, temperature, and displacement. And, and the challenge with the, you know, a technology that has so much application like this is to, to select the right field. Mm -hmm. So uh, we felt that uh, you know, the, the medical device application were uh, one of the most interesting for our technology. And that's a place where we think we can contribute to uh, the health uh, of patients and supporting doctors at the same time. So right now, uh, we are selling mostly in uh, interventional cardiology, mm -hmm. where our device uh, uh, provide pressure measurement. And with that, we can uh, provide a diagnostic for the physician to decide if they need to implement a stent or not. So you went from uh, pipelines to uh, arteries. Like I said, we, we can have multiple applications and uh, obviously when the company was founded in 2004, there was two uh, great individuals, uh, three founders at Opson, so uh, Pierre Carrier was taking uh, the lead as CEO and we had uh, Claude Belleville that was leading the medical device field while we had uh, Gaetan Duplain going after industrial market mm -hmm. and, and obviously, uh, you know, you can enter much faster in industrial applications such as oil and gas where there is almost no regulatory obstacle while in the uh, medical device field it takes a little bit more time. Sure, because it's about people's uh, safety. Well, uh, obviously regulation, uh, you know, regulatory bodies that want to ensure uh, safety for the patient. So in that context you have much more uh, steps before uh, doing the, the commercialization of the device into uh, uh, an hospital. And let's talk about your, your basic product, which I'm holding uh, right here. It looks like an old uh, LP record, but actually it says not for human use, but I'm going to use it anyway a little bit. It's, it's got fiber optic cable right here, thinner than a human hair. And initially I thought um, that the, the wire here, very thin fiber optic cable, went into the heart 
and then would touch the blockage and, and destroy it or pulverize it. But that's not it at all. It goes in there, and but using light, you measure pressure to perfection to make sure that the blockage, to find out where it begins, where it goes, and should it be taken care of or not. And you do this, again, with this very thin wire that, in fact, carries light and, and uh, it is not used for pressure. So how does it work? Well, uh, you know, there, is, there was a, a huge evolution in the field of cardiology. And, uh, you know, in, in the early, early days, uh, the, the, the way they were assessing uh, chlorine blockage was to use uh, images. And, and over time, you know, th there is multiple clinical data that showed that uh, images may not give the right information to uh, cardiologists. So in that context, there is, you know, uh, you know very, uh, very bright doctors that uh, develop a, a procedure where uh, if you compare pressure measurement before a chronic blockage and, and after, you will get two different pressure measurements. And when you combine those and, and by calculating a ratio, if, if you see a decrease of more than 20%, it means that it's beneficial for the patient to do a stent implementation. Mm -hmm. While if the result is above that threshold, it's, it's more beneficial for the patient not to do such uh, stent implementation. So uh, I would say it was kind of a, a normal evolu evolution in interventional cardiology, uh, moving from image to physiology. But today, uh, you know, we are very proud to, to bring to the market a, a device that we think is really answering the needs of the phys physician to ultimately uh, help them uh, make the right call for the patient. Well, you're very obviously doing something right because you're dominating the market in Japan, in America, in Canada. Um, people really want this product and they're coming to you when they need FFR, as it's called, fractional flow reserve. Yeah, well, uh, domination is, a, is a, <laughs> maybe a strong word. Let's say we'll, we'll take this in a, a little bit more humble manner where uh, we feel that uh, for, for very challenging cases, uh, if, if physicians have something difficult to assess, difficult to, uh, to treat, they will use our product. We still have, uh, from our perspective, a lot of opportunity to gain uh, market share mm -hmm. against uh, the, the, the first companies that were using, I would say, more conventional te technologies to perform yeah. FFR. So uh, we are uh, not uh, close to be a market uh, share leader, but we feel that in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, performance of our uh, pressure guide wire, uh, we do very well. And that's the feedback that we get also from, from customers. And this, your basic product, is, is fascinating in how it works. We've all seen a few minutes ago the guide wire that I pulled on, and we can see it's as thin as a human hair, or maybe thinner. Um, and we're immediately uh, rem reminded of the cameras, the nano cameras, that they do send up into the arteries normally that give the doctor a picture. But that's not what you do. They seem similar, but they're not. You send light, and your purpose is to measure pressure just before and just after the blockage. And this is so precise, you showed me a couple of pictures um, that would mean nothing to me, but you said a, a cardiologist would think that the one on the left is okay, the artery is okay, and on the right it's not. And he'd be wrong on both counts. It's not okay and the other one is okay. And the only way you can know that is through this precise measure of the pressure through the guide wire. Well, it's exactly that. Uh, I mean, the, the two uh, co-inventors of the uh, FFR procedure, uh, so Dr. Uh, Nico Pels from uh, Netherlands and Dr. Uh, Bernard de Bruyne from Belgium, you know, they, they have almost dedicated their, their life to uh, help this improvement in the procedure. And, and clearly, uh, they showed with, with very strong clinical data that you know, an image can be misleading. You know, the right way to understand if there is any issue with blood circulation around the art is really to, uh, to compare pressure measurement. So at the end of the day, you're providing something absolutely essential because you're giving the truest possible picture and the most precise and the most reliable of what's going on inside that artery. And therefore, a solution can be found and the right solution can be found 
and the wrong solution can be rejected. It's physiology, so uh, you know, human body can be complex, can adapt to various situations. So getting exactly in the art, in the coronary arteries, the pressure measurement is providing what we think the right information uh, for the physician to make a decision. And your task stops right there. You're, you're not the ones who, who are going to go in to work on the stent, install the stent, or, or not do it, and, and, uh, and uh, go to work there. You give a perfect picture, a perfect diagnosis, the best possible diagnosis, and then that's handed over to the doctor for further decision. Uh, you know, our uh, pressure guide wire is already in place after uh, providing the pressure measurement. So in that context, if the physician wants to use it to deliver the stent, uh, you know, our product is, is, is approved and, and very good in doing that. So uh, that's another contribution that we feel we are doing for the patient because uh, by already having the, the wire in place in, in the art, uh, you can save some time in the procedure. And also because of the, the construction, the uh, innovation that the uh, Opsons team uh, did, uh, we, we get the feedback from physicians that they are very comfortable in delivering the stent over our guide wire. With any innovation, of course, um, there's, there's always two sides to the coin. Some cardiologists watching this, for instance, might say, this is great, we want to try this in our hospital, let's find out more. Others will say, well, we don't need that, we've got what we need as is. So how do you convince the skeptics and how do you put it out there in the market? I would say the, the cardiologists in general, the, the physician, are, are people that are very uh, open to uh, new technologies. So uh, it doesn't take a long time for them to see uh, the, the value, the, the benefit of using our product compared to uh, competitors. Uh, this being said, in our case, the, the challenges that we have to overcome is obviously uh, Absence is a, a young, growing company, uh, and we are facing, you know, much larger organization mm -hmm. and with, uh, that are uh, a little bit more uh, well established in the hospital. This being said, I think uh, you know, physicians, doctors, obviously the, all, all these persons are uh, highly dedicated to their patient and in that context when they, when they get the end on our product, they, they really appreciate it. So they don't send it back, they don't ask for a refund. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And it's, it's, speaking of that, of the finances behind all this, um, when I visited your, uh, your offices and um, the installations, you, know, you have everything there. It's uh, state-of-the-art. You have clean rooms, um, as they call them. Um, you have technicians. You have uh, administrative personnel. Everything looks spick and span and really very, very well managed. And there's a lot of technology and research, obviously, going into this. And this is light and very uh, extremely efficient um, and so when I saw all that I took a guess and I figured this well this little thing must be in the thousands of dollars but actually no it's six hundred and fifty dollars which I find a bargain if I do say so myself how did you keep the price so low? We, we sell our product six hundred fifty dollar uh, US and, and the rationale there is that I mean, for, uh, for the company, it's sustainable. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, a good gross margin that can help us to uh, continue to grow, to continue to invest in uh, innovation, because we, we feel that we can have uh, even more contribution to the field. And from a, a customer perspective, uh, I mean, this product can help them, uh, again, make the right decision, maybe save uh, some uh, stand implementation, or at least making sure that when there is a stand that is implemented into a patient, it's for the right reason. So by using uh, you know, FFR with, with our device, they can be sure to make the right, right decision and save some stand implementation. This being said, uh, as we all know, uh, the, the cost for the healthcare system in general is growing. Yeah. So uh, we feel that uh, it's, it's, it's somehow our uh, procedure can help to, to manage, to control those costs. And did this come on as a surprise in, in, in the world of uh, cardiology? Um, it's the, I mean, the, the, the sending a little, a tiny a nano camera into the arteries and towards the heart, that's something that sort of was in the air for years and talked about that it would happen one day. Everybody could see that coming. 
This, on the other hand, is something far more indirect, more innovative. Um, it's a very intelligent way of, 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 of challenging everything by starting with the pressure and using light. So did you have skepticism at first or just plain surprise? And did you have to explain it to people and try to convince them? If we say it in, in very simple word, today, okay, we measure pressure with a light signal. Mm -hmm. I mean, this seems to be uh, very complex. Obviously, uh, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's a, a technology or a, an application of light that is known. The, the challenge in developing a product like this is that, uh, obviously, the, the size, also the, the changing condition where you change temperature, you change, you change humidity. So in our case, okay, we built uh, intellectual property, we made innovation to make sure that our sensor was uh, very accurate in, in, uh, in the human body condition uh, utilization. And FFR is one of our applications. We are also selling just our sensing technology to other medical device corporation. And again, uh, where we are very proud is that uh, we feel that our technology can have a, a contribution uh, to the field where it can help to implement medical device in the human body. It can provide the right information and this very rapidly. And, and here's a stunning figure I, I found in the research. Your revenue, fully half of it comes from Japan. Yeah. Not Canada, not the US. Well, uh, you know, the, as I mentioned before, uh, that there is some regulatory obstacle in the medical device uh, field. Mm -hmm. And in our case, uh, the Japanese market was one of the first ones where we were ready. Uh, we had a, a long-term uh, partner there, a corporation called uh, Xeon Corporation, that was ready to uh, commercialize our device in the Japanese market. And on top of this, I would say there is some uh, interesting uh, cultural uh, you know, uh, rationale behind the use of MFR, mm -hmm. is that uh, in Japan, obviously, the, the age of the population uh, in, is rising. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, the Japanese people uh, give a lot of importance in using the best product to treat uh, older uh, patients. So in that context, that was a great fit for our technology. And that's the first market where we invest uh, massively to penetrate. And obviously, this is so popular um, with the medical core um, that um, you have to be either, either you're being imitated already or somebody is planning to and trying hard to do so. How do you protect your uh, IP? Well, uh, you know, uh, obviously there is a, a lot of patents around our uh, technology, our mm -hmm. product. Uh, and on top of this, uh, the expertise of Opsons, I mean, uh, we have really a, a leading edge uh, knowledge in fiber optic. Uh, you know, we, we are talking here mostly about medical, but we showed uh, this, uh, this knowledge in various other fields. We've been in the past in, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the only company in the world that was able to measure uh, pressure and temperature at more than 300 degrees Celsius for more than three years with a very accurate measurement. So you don't see that in any other uh, corporation. So um, yes, obviously people are trying to catch up on this. Mm -hmm. This being said, for us, I mean, even if we feel that we have the, the, the product that is um, the best product in the market today, we see still a lot of room for improvement and we are going to invest there. I mentioned earlier, of course, that you have uh, different applications for the same technology. Um, you're out of oil and gas, but you're certainly in aerospace and the military, and uh, specifically uh, two intriguing uh, innovations that you're working on. Um, one of them uses pressure again through a light source, measuring pressure inside a, um, a pipe that feeds smaller planes from larger planes when refueling in mid-flight. Um, and we've all seen that on, on TV, how it's done. But now your apparatus is inside those pipes to, to monitor that and monitor the pressure. And in another case, um, really surprising, you have a technology, again, using the same tools to help uh, the ordnance, the, uh, the explosives on an airplane, on an aircraft carrier to prevent that from actually dropping accidentally onto the aircraft carrier and causing a, a friendly fire explosion. Let's talk about that. 
again, here, if we uh, take a very high-level uh, view on this, is that, I mean, the, the fit of fiber optic for aerospace, uh, military application, semiconductor, is really there. Because fiber optic is not affected by electromagnetic interference. So in that context, it can provide accurate measurement, even if there is various other tools around. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, uh, the aerospace industry is an industry, again, that is moving toward fiber optic for various reasons, such as safety, uh, also the, the weight of the technology, uh, the, the fact that it, it's not affected by uh, you know, electromagnetic interference is also uh, mm -hmm. useful. And fuel monitoring is something important uh, in the aerospace. And they want to uh, improve the performance. They want to improve the accuracy to ultimately have uh, flights that are uh, more efficient and also uh, safer. And uh, so Opsons is working on this with, uh, uh, with uh, various partners. We announced uh, recently a, a partnership with Temai that is working on a process to do uh, refueling of uh, aircraft while they are in, in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of, you know, bomb uh, launching system, uh, you know, our, our goal there is to ensure uh, safety. And, and the way we do that, you know, we do uh, various monitorings on component to make sure that uh, you know, everything is immune against electromagnetic interference. And on that application, uh, in terms of uh, ensuring safety, Opsons is the leader in the world. And you've left oil and gas in the dust, no pun intended. Um, that used to be your primary source of revenue. Um, but now you've moved on, you've lost interest. Well, I think there is that uh, we have limited resources. So we need to go after markets that are providing the best uh, you know, value for the shareholders, value for the community. And uh, in the context where there was a decrease in the price of commodities in the oil mm -hmm. and gas, and we were selling our device to uh, every oil producer uh, in, in Western Canada. Uh, and, and those producers suddenly had less resources to invest to optimize their system. So we decided to uh, focus on other market. But you know, the, the, this allowed us, uh, as example, in the medical, where initially we were just selling our, our sensing technology to various medical device corporation, mm -hmm. while during this transformation, we, uh, we, we completely transformed the company because we moved from a sensor provider to some, a, a corporation that would be you know, a cardiology corporation where we develop our full medical device product with the full control to sell this ultimately to the hospital. And this was you know, a, a, a process that was so interesting because we we saw multiple applications for pressure and temperature in medical. And at the end, we picked one application, which is a yeah. fractional flow reserve, where we felt, we, we felt it was the best fit with us because product was mostly relying on pressure measurement. There was on knees in the market, and there was uh, good clinical data that were supporting that procedure. So through that process, uh, you know, decreasing the, the options presence in the LN gas, and putting more sure. resources in, in medical device, we change options. And by the way, we, since this is an entrepreneurial story and, and, a, and an excellent one, we mustn't forget that while you were doing all these things on product and on corporate mission, um, you were also uh, taking a company that was flat on its back when you arrived at a very low share price. You brought all that back up. Yeah, well, to, to be fair, uh, let's say the, uh, the perception of investors were uh, somehow at that time negative to uh, regarding options. So uh, I, I took the position as president and CEO uh, when the stock was 20 cents. Obviously, we went uh, multiple uh, factors uh, Eight times. above that yeah. uh, over time. But, uh, you know, my perspective is a little bit different, is that, uh, you know, uh, people that were uh, there before me, and I was part of the team. Uh, you know, we were investing for the future. We had great uh, foundation, but at that time, it was not recognized uh, by the market. But when we reach out the market, when we got uh, feedback from customer mm -hmm. uh, in various uh, industries, suddenly the perception changed. But we feel it's just a start. I mean, uh, there is this technology is so strong. There is so. Uh, th there is great application where we can really have a contribution to the community to improve efficiency, to 
to improve safety and we intend to, uh, to dedicate our resources to that. And we think it will be very good also for our shareholders and employees. And uh, Louis Laflamme, I'm thinking in my mind's eye, an imaginary shareholders meeting where one minute you're answering questions about delicate medical matters like that, and a few minutes later you've got a military man from the Pentagon or elsewhere, and you have to reassure him that his bombs won't fall by mistake on the deck of the aircraft carrier. That would be quite the shareholders meeting. Well, uh, I would say it's very interesting, and uh, uh, yeah, you see me, but obviously we have a, a very strong feel for each of those applications, uh, I mean, very strong team, so uh, the, the, the knowledge at Opsons is, is very deep, mm -hmm. and I'm just, uh, you know, benefiting from that to be able to provide the, 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 the right information to uh, our customer and our shareholders. Well, like all true winners, uh, you are modest and it's, uh, it's sincere. And uh, Louis Laflamme, therefore, I want to wish you long life, good luck, and I'm sure you'll have that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Louis Laflamme was our guest this week on the Entrepreneur Series of the World Show. I'm Bob Scully. Have a great week. Thanks. Bob Scully's World Show was made possible in part by GDI, Commercial Cleaning Services, one provider, one solution. And by Clocks Technologies, Biophotonic Lighting, manages skin from within.